What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. So for this video, uh, a few of you guys have been asking about my Del Sol, uh, where it's been, how's the turbo holding up, blah blah blah. So I'm gonna cover that, hopefully in this pretty quick video, and uh, hopefully you guys get some information out of it. So to start this off, let's go over what it has done to it right off the bat. Uh, it is a bone stock B20 VTEC, so it has just a, you know, a normal Japanese uh, B20B bottom end, a first gen B16 head, I have B16 cams, I have VMS adjustable cam gears, and I have GSR dual springs and ARP head studs. Everything else is bone stock. I think it's a Type R replica, skunk replica intake manifold. I got it with the head, so I don't even know. Um, pretty sure it's stock throttle body or GSR throttle body, but nonetheless, stock motor. So as for the turbo, uh, I started this motor off with a Garrett T25, I forget the exact size, but you know, just like the stock SR20 turbo, and uh, that didn't last very long. So on that turbo, I made uh, five and a half PSI. It was supposed to be a six pound, but it was a weak actuator, but yeah, I tuned it on 91 at five and a half PSI, and it made 211 uh, wheel horsepower and like 180 pounds of torque, or 189, or somewhere around there. I'd have to look at my dyno sheet. But now, the turbo that it has in here now, I've had in here since, shoot, I don't know, six, seven months now. It is a Max Peating Rods GT2871. It's a universal turbo. It's supposed to be kind of like the step up stock replacement from the Garrett T25 in terms of, um, like, I don't know, dimensions or whatever. Uh, if you want to look up the trim specs and all that, you can find it on Amazon. I paid 130 bucks shipped for it, and I've had it on the car for, shoot, about seven months, six, seven months, daily driven. It's been a while already. But yeah, I daily drive this car. I drive basically 70 miles a day round trip, sometimes more if I have to stop for groceries or errands or something. And uh, this turbo right now is set up on about eh, 8 PSI. It kind of depends on the you know the day. But yeah, the, it's got an adjustable wastegate actuator on this one as compared to the Garrett turbo where it was a fixed actuator. So uh, when I first put the turbo on, I had to turn it way down. It was pushing like 15 PSI with boost creep because I forgot to port the uh, wastegate hole on this one. I just never got around to it. I just kind of compensated with the actuator and whatnot. But yeah, right now it runs between 7 to 9 PSI depending on the day and how much boost creep I'm getting at the moment. But uh, so far, absolutely no issues. The issue that I had with my Garrett is that the exhaust seal blew out on it and I didn't really want to rebuild it. I got quoted like 400 for uh, a rebuild from AGP Turbos out here in Tempe, Arizona. So I was like, ah, I don't really have the money to spend on that right now. It's just my daily driver. So the car is a little bit ugly, front bumpers, chip and paint. That was my fault and all that. But yeah, the turbo, honestly, holding up fantastic. Uh, it still holds and pulls boost just fine. Here's a few clips of that. Launch control still sounds good, still works, you know, it, it works and builds boost as it should. Absolutely no issues there. Uh, if you guys saw, I'm running uh, two catch cans, that's just more for my thing because I'm trying to experiment with some stuff. The big one I made myself, then I got the little eBay in the back venting the block. Uh, the manifold, I'm just doing eBay manifold at the moment. I've had to fix it twice. The first time it split quite literally in half. 
and uh, I had to drive home open header pretty much from work and uh, yeah that sucked but I welded it up added more bracing it did good and then above it on the metal it cracked so this manifold don't bother with it I'm saving up for a different manifold it's just hard to find a tubular style um, T25 manifold um, that is like affordable but I found one through PFAB racing and it's AC power steering friendly it's only 350 bucks so Haters be, uh, be forewarned, I am switching manifolds. This one I just keep rewilding it every time it breaks, but I'm trying to baby the car other than for this video, so that way I can save up and still be able to drive this until I get the new manifold. As for putting the turbo on, it depends on your application though, because mine was already set up for the Garrett T25. It's decently similar, my water lines were the same, uh, but my oil feed line is different because this one has a built-in restrictor. My Garrett turbo did not have a built-in restrictor. So I had to get my oil feed line fitting change, I had to order a different one. This, in this case, I think it happened to be M12 one and a half to a dash four fitting, so eight bucks later on eBay and I'm back on the road. The drain line, same situation, same style. It's, like I said, it's meant to be kind of a gear replica turbo. It's actually a hybrid. It's a T25, T28 hybrid, so it is a little bit bigger. This is the smallest one that I could find because I wanted a smaller turbo, quicker spool, not going for max power. Um, but speaking of power, as the car sits, it should be making about 250, um, 240 wheel horsepower, which this car feels plenty fast for me. I know it's not a whole lot of power, but with how light the car is and being a street daily driven car on all season tires uh, and soft suspension, it's got Yanaka spec ones on here. So torque steer is real. Um, but yeah, it's holding up pretty well so far. I haven't had any issues with the turbo since I've owned it. Now, I do have one issue with the car, and that is on deceleration. If I decelerate for a little bit, uh, or whatever, then occasionally I'll get a puff of smoke out the back. I've already diagnosed it. It's not the turbo. I have no shaft play. I have no oil in any of my charge piping. I have no oil in my downpipe. Like I found my Garrett turbo was bad when I popped the downpipe off and it was a filled with oil. Um, so I think that's more of a ventilation issue from the lack of a PCV valve or my valve seals are starting to go out. But I just don't downshift. I just uh, pull it out of gear and brake like normal because this isn't a race car. Like I said, it's a daily driver, so I don't really worry about it. I know it's quirk, so I don't, I don't know. You guys know what I'm saying. But the turbo is oil and water cooled, so I do have the water lines hooked up, so that way uh, I can't, you know, I'm not gonna blow up the turbo right away. I do take the precautions for uh, shutting the car down. I let it idle for 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how hard I've been driving it before I kill it. I do have a uh, turbo timer, I just don't have the right plug to plug it into my fuse box. But I also run a uh, turbo blanket that helps keep the heat in, you know, and then my custom downpipe that I made, I uh, keep that all heat wrapped, so everything is pretty much well protected. Um, the nice thing about this turbo though is it did come with an oil restrictor on it, which is nice because you know being built in you don't have to worry about sourcing the right one, making sure your turbo is getting enough oil, too much oil. Uh, they do that work for you, so it's really not that bad. Because this thing feels good. It builds boost pretty consistently. I'm almost always at full boost by 3,500 to 4,000 RPM. I can never really tell, uh, but probably I will say 3,800 and I got full boost, which isn't that bad. If any of you guys are wondering why my blow off valve is uh, tied on there, for some reason, whatever reason, I cannot get the seat or the snap ring to sit in there. I've got, I've shaved it down a little bit. I've changed out the O-ring. Yeah, so I've had it pop off multiple times, but we're good now. It holds just like that. And as a matter of fact, I like that turbo so much that I went ahead and bought a second one for my Miata because it works. And it, I've tried and trued it so far, and I have no issues, so I figured, what the heck, let's get another one. But yeah, I've probably put a, eh, close to 8,000 miles on this turbo since I put it on about six months ago. I drive the car for the first couple months. I was driving it pretty on hard, being new to boost and everything. I was just enjoying it. And even now, I really only get into boost when I'm getting on the freeway or if I'm trying to get around somebody. But when I need it, it is there. And this car has not let me down, thankfully. I'm really stoked on that, especially coming from an eBay turbo and an eBay manifold with a setup that I had to fab up and make work. But you know what? It works. So other than the manifold being trash, this turbo is pretty darn legit.
that's pretty much my update. Letting you guys know that I am probably, let's say 8,000 miles in on this, about two and a half oil changes in. Uh, turbo is still giving me no issues. Turbo still pulls hard and uh, makes really cool noises. So hopefully uh, this inspires you guys or encourages you guys that yes, always it's best always to buy uh, name brand stuff, but if you're like me and you can't afford that $1,000 Garrett Turbo or more even, then you know sometimes you gotta work with the eBay stuff and sometimes the eBay stuff isn't that bad this turbo and this car being testament to that. So hopefully if you guys enjoyed the video, uh, you'll leave a like on this video. And if you're new to the channel, hopefully you've considered subscribing. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys are gonna be, if you guys run any eBay turbos or if you have any experience with other eBay turbos, good or bad. And uh, be sure to hit up the big cartel and pick up a Toge Life sticker of the Miata. We will have new stuff, hopefully pretty soon. I'm trying to get somebody to help me kind of make stuff up because my normal person that makes my stickers for me is uh, very, very busy. But anyways, guys, do what you love, forget about the rest, and we'll see you in the next one. Um, yeah, keep on building. Peace out.